Hey there, everybody, and welcome. Today, I'm going to be teaching and playing through a solo game of Arc Nova by new designer Matthias Wigge. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing the German there. The game's going to be officially released sometime in the next several months. It's a relatively heavy Euro about managing a zoo, which actually I think is pretty refreshing, considering that virtually, I think, every zoo-like game on the market is pretty lightweight. So it's nice to have a real serious zoo simulation available. There's only a handful of differences that separate the solo game from the multiplayer game. So by watching this video, you're going to come away with a fairly good understanding of exactly how the game plays, be it solo or multiplayer. Now, as you can see, I'm going to be using a program that I wrote to play the game today. The advantage of my using my program is that uh, you'll not only see everything that happens up close, but more importantly, my program is going to ensure, I hope, that for the most part I don't miss any steps or play the game incorrectly. So there won't be any inadvertent cheating happening in this playthrough, and you're pretty much guaranteed to learn the rules correctly the first time around. I think I'm going to be teaching the rules as I play through the game. I think that's an easier way to uh, digest them. You don't get overwhelmed by too many rules at, at one time. Now let me say right away that if you're not familiar with my YouTube channel, I write these programs for my own personal enjoyment. I've only officially released two of them with the approval of the respective designers and publishers, so please don't ask for a copy of this program because I just can't make it available due to the obvious copyright restrictions. But if you go, go to my YouTube channel, you'll, you'll see that I've written lots of programs over the years and, and recorded many a tutorial using those programs. So you'll get an idea of this. This is the sort of thing I do. I should also point out that I haven't had a lot of experience playing the game, solo or otherwise. Uh, I have been playing as I've been testing, so I, I, I honestly don't have any idea of how well or how poorly I'm going to perform today. I am going to be moving this along, so you really don't want to watch this video for an example of optimal play by any stretch of the imagination. That said, I am going to try to do my best, and we'll see what happens. So with all that in mind, let's get started. Now, as you can see here, there are several maps you can choose from when playing the game. So map A is for beginners, or people who are playing this for the first time. Map 0, or Plan 0 as it's called, is intended for relative newcomers who graduated beyond map A and its plethora of bonuses and just want a little more of a challenge. But if you're playing the game multiplayer with people who haven't played before, you could always give them map A while you play with map zero as a sort of handicap. But in addition to map A and map zero, there are eight asymmetric maps you can play with if you really want to be challenged. And since no one's published a video yet playing with one of these, I thought I would push myself and provide you with an example of how they work. So I am going to choose to play Advanced today, and my program is going to deal out two of the Advanced maps to me at random, and I will have to select one to play with. Okay, so what do we got? Hollywood Hills, which is this map. So this says that uh, when you cover a space with an H, you reveal cards from the deck until you reveal a sponsor card, add the sponsor card to your hand, discard all the other cards, and then once all three H spots are covered, the level of each sponsor card you play is reduced by one strength. Now, if you're not familiar with the game, that this is not going to make a lot of sense, but uh, if you are somewhat familiar with the game, maybe it will. On the other hand, I also was dealt Research Institute that says after the Research Institute has been connected, meaning here's the Research Institute, if I put a polyomino so I cover it on the map so I cover this space here, then you may ignore one requirement on every animal card you play. You may not ignore walk, rock, or water requirements. The Research Institute's considered connected as soon as you have placed a building on the adjacent space. 
Okay, so do I want to play a sponsor-heavy game, in which case I'll play with Hollywood Hills, or do I want to play an animal-heavy game, in which case I'll probably play with the Research Institute? I guess I'll, I think I'll go with the Research Institute. I'm not sure it's going to make a huge difference here, but uh, I think that's the map I'll play with. So there are a bunch of different bonuses that you can get uh, gather as you place polyominoes on this map, but there are more when you're playing with map A or map zero, and the bonuses tend to be better. But be that as it may, let's select Research Institute. Now I've been dealt eight cards from the deck, and I have to discard down to four before starting the game. Now, there are three types of cards that make up the deck. Vast majority of the cards are animal cards, which have a yellow b uh, banner like this. So my cards have been sorted by my program with all the animals uh, in the far left. There are also conservation cards like this one with a green banner. And it looks like I got dealt four sponsor cards. Those have a blue banner. Conservation cards represent the main way you can score conservation points in the game. And sponsor cards are used for their immediate and their ongoing special effects. The rules recommend that you start the game with one or two sponsor cards that you think you can fulfill early on for their special abilities. And the rest of your hand should be made up of animals. Since you can't really play a conservation card in the early part of the game, there's usually no point in holding on to those. So uh, since I have to discard four cards, clearly I'm going to discard large animals. Now I have three more I have to uh, discard, but before I go any further, let me give you a, a very brief summary of the scoring tracks in this game and explain how you actually win the game. So there is an appeal track that uh, is in brown that starts here at zero and comes all the way around, wraps this way, and ends at whatever, 113 points, although it's unlikely you'll ever get that high. The appeal track measures the, uh, represents how appealing your zoo is to the public. In a multiplayer game, the starting player uh, starts on the zero space of the appeal track. The second player in turn order starts on the first space, the third player in the second space, and so forth. But in a solo game, when you're playing at the easiest level, which is highly recommended until, be, until you become really good at the game, you start with your marker on space 20 of the appeal track, which is why my blue token is sitting over here on space 20. There's also a conservation track that runs parallel to the appeal track, but opposite. So it's green, and I start at zero up here in the top left corner, and this one wraps clockwise and ends down here around 41. Again, you'll very unlikely you'll ever get that far. In a multiplayer game, the end of the game is triggered as soon as one player's conservation marker falls in the same region as that player's appeal marker. So once those two markers meet or cross over each other, the game ends as soon as each other player play one final turn. The solo game works a bit differently. Effectively, you have exactly 27 turns in order to get your appeal marker to meet or pass by your uh, conservation marker. Now, if you do that sooner than 27 turns, all the better. With my appeal down here at 20 and my conservation up here starting at zero, uh, if I can get them to collide or cross each other, I'll have effectively won the game. So, for instance, if I can get my conservation, say, up to 11 points, right here, as long as my appeal reaches space 91, you can see they've landed in the same zone here, and um, it means I'll have won the game. If my conservation moved past the appeal marker, or the appeal marker at the same time moves past the conservation marker, then it just means I'll end the game with positive victory points. But as long as these two tokens meet and are in the same region, you're guaranteed to score zero victory points, which, although it doesn't sound good, it means you've won the game. In addition to the brown appeal track and the green conservation track, there's also a blue reputation track that starts at one 
and moves across this way. It uh, starts off as blue and then turns purple over here, and it'll be clear later on why the track is colored the way it is. Anyway, let's get back to discarding cards. So I've been dealt four blue sponsor cards. Let, cards. Let me see what I like and what I might want to hang on to. So I've got breeding program here. There's a large version displayed up here. It requires that I have two research icons. Those are icons that look like a microscope. I have to have those two research icons in order to play this. And when playing the card, you place two tokens on it. And when completing a base conservation project, you may discard exactly one token as to substitute as, as any icon. So I like the sound of that. Uh, I was also dealt engineer. Each time you build at least one building with a build action, you may build exactly one more of the same kind at the normal cost. Not bad. Side entrance. Uh, place on two border spaces. Need not be adjacent to other buildings. Gain two dollars, two money for each building except empty standard enclosures that are next to the side entrance. Uh, that could actually come in very handy because I'm playing research engines too, because it means I could, when, when you place your first polyomino, it has to be placed somewhere on the border. But this means, because I have side entrance, I, I could place maybe over here somewhere to start off, but then put the side entrance over here, and that way I can build off of the side entrance or build off of whatever structures I have over here to the east. So that offers me some flexibility in that uh, in that sense. Uh, we have talented communicator, hire one association worker. That's very good too. Uh, there are lots of ways, however, to earn association workers. Uh, I think I can probably make do without that card. So let's make that as one of my discards. So I have two more I have to get rid of. I've got two birds here, Greater Flamingo and Lesser Bird of Paradise. And I've got a, a mammal, a Cotton Top Tamarin, which interestingly enough also requires the same two research icons that Breeding Program requires. So these two cards kind of work in concert with one another. Oh, I guess I should also look at the conservation projects that were dealt out ran randomly because that might govern what I keep and what I get rid of. There's a little mini display of those conservation projects up here in the top right corner. We've got birds, so you can earn two conservation points, for example, if you have two bird icons in or around your player board. Asia, you can get uh, at least two conservation points if you've got at least two Asia icons. And species diversity requires different animal types in your zoo, like a bird and a mammal and a predator, for example. All three of those are good. And now the fact that I have two birds means I'm in a strong position to play off of this. I hate to give up any one of these uh, sponsor cards. Well, as much as I hate to do it, I'm going to get rid of the cotton top tamarind because it's not a bird. <laughs> and even though it also requires two research icons, uh, yeah, I think that one can easily go. And then one of these are going to go. This greater flamingo is a bird from Europe. That's what this icon means. And the lesser bird of paradise is a bird from Australia. I'm not sure why this one's greater and this one's lesser, but that's what, why they're what they're called. You can see that this game sort of plays a little like terraforming Mars. It's been uh, it's been compared to terraforming Mars, but I should say that Arc Nova, like many successful games, borrows mechanisms from other popular games and just creates its own unique mashup of mechanisms. Now. Interestingly enough, I'm not a big fan of Terraforming Mars. I guess I just don't like the theme that much, but I really dig the theme here. Uh, let's see. So given the those base conservation project cards, and by the way, there are four base conservation cards laid out if you're playing a four-click player game. Otherwise, there are three of them. Uh, 
given that I have Asia, and I can go for species diversity and the birds, I don't know, that doesn't really help me. I um, This one's worth seven appeal and costs 16. This one's worth 15, cost 15 is worth five appeal. And they both have the same special ability. Uh, I don't know, it's frankly a toss up. Oh, you know what? Over here I was dealt two scoring cards. I guess I should look at those too. One is small animal zoo. I can gain conservation points at the end of the game for having small animals in my zoo. And another is sponsored zoo. I can gain conservation points for having sponsor cards in my zoo. Uh, now I have to discard one of these scoring cards before the end of the game, but let's say I hold on to small animal zoo. This is a small animal, uh, size one and two animals, which are which is this icon in the top left corner, represents the size that ranges from one to five. One and two represents a small animal, four and five represent a large animal, and three, the, like the greater flamingo, is sort of medium size. So since I have small animal zoo over here, arbitrarily I'm just going to get rid of the greater flamingo and stick with the lesser bird of paradise. I just have to make a decision and go with it. Just a couple other things to point out. I start the game over here with $25 or money. I'm going to be probably saying dollars because I'm American, so I apologize for that. Uh, I have one association worker. I could potentially get uh, hire three more workers down here. And I have places where I can uh, partner with other zoos around the world. That's what these spaces are for. And here I can partner with other universities. So that's what these spaces are for. When you take a turn in Arc Nova, you choose one of your five action cards to play. So the action cards, uh, and this is the same, these are the same for all players. Everybody has an animals card, which starts off on its weak blue side. And, uh, every, and this is how you play animals into your zoo. Everybody has a build card. This is how you construct buildings or enclosures for the animals. Everybody has a cards action, which allows them to get more cards into, into their hand. An association action is used with your workers in conjunction with the association board to do things like gaining more reputation, associating yourself with a partner zoo from another continent, partnering with a university, or completing a, a conservation project. And over here you can make donations to uh, the conservatory in order to gain conservation points as well. These are the base conservation cards down here, the, the same three cards that are showing up in this little mini display up here in the top right corner. And you can also play uh, other conservation cards from your hand, and if you do, they show up above the, concert, above the association board up here. Lastly, there's a sponsors action card, which allow you to play sponsors or gain money. The degree to which you can play these cards, or the strength of the cards, is governed by what slot they're in. So, for instance, if the animal's card is in slot one, and by the rules say it has to be in slot one at the start of the game, you can see from the card it says you can play animal cards from your hand, and if it's in slot one, you play zero. So, you can't use the animal's card if it's in slot one. The other action cards are, are shuffled and randomly distributed, so these were randomly laid out this way. So, for example, with a level two build action, I can build, I can build one building with a maximum size of X, in my case, size two. And I pay $2 per space that the building occupies. And I can build either a kiosk or a pavilion or a standard enclosure or a, enclosure or a petting zoo. A level three cards action, as you can see from the table here, lets me draw two cards and discard one. But it gets more powerful as this, it moves to the slots uh, higher up to the right. A level four association action lets me perform one association task with a maximum value of X. 
on the association board, you can see that this task requires two strength, this requires three strength, this requires four strength, and completing a conservation project requires five strength. Uh, level four association action, therefore, would allow me to either partner with a university or, or anything to the left of it. And then finally, a sponsor card of level five lets me play one sponsor card with a maximum level of five. The level is shown in the top left corner of the card here. So the, I've got two level fours and a level three, uh, which means this level five sponsor card is maybe where I start. I'm not sure. But if you don't want to play a sponsor card, you can always break where it says break X, gain X, it means you can basically gain five bucks. I'll talk more about what it means to break in the game uh, later on. What most people do to start the game, a good strong early action is to go to the association board and get a partner zoo. Because if you, for example, have a partner zoo with the Americas, it means you can play animals from the Americas at a $3 discount. Uh, similarly, African animals, if you had an African partner zoo, you could play at a $3 discount, potentially a $6 discount if the animal had two Africa icons on it. So for example, my lesser bird of paradise here is uh, from Australia. If I had an Australian partner zoo, instead of paying 15 to house the animal in my zoo, I would only have to pay 12. Having said that, and given the fact that my association action is starting over here at level four, instead of going right for a sponsor card, I think I'm gonna play this level four association. I start off with one worker. You need workers in order to do an association action. And I, because it's level four, it means I can do anything from here over to the left. And this university provides me with two research icons, which is what I need in order to uh, meet the requirements of breeding program. So I think I'm going to start by taking this level four association action and taking this university with two research icons. So then I'll be eligible to play that other sponsor card later. So that this token is going to get removed from the association board. It's going to get put here in the bottom space on my player board. The token will then be removed. If I were playing a multiplayer game, another player would not be able to get this university unless it was replenished uh, until, or until it was replenished when a break happened at some point later on in the game. The other thing that's going to happen after I take this university and put it here on my player board is that the solo board, the top left token, this is the solo board, this is what you play with when you're playing a solo game, the token at the top in the left column is going to slide right to denote that I basically have taken one turn. So that's, that's what's going to happen here with my level four association. I'm going to take this university and then my association action card will get shifted over to, to slot one where it'll become very weak and animals and build and cards will slide over to the right and become stronger. Let's grab this university. The token slides to the right and my association action card is now in slot one where it's pretty much useless to me. If you remember from the association board, the minimum action you can do over here is gain reputation by having two association, two strength. And uh, with one strength, you can't really do much of anything. So that was my first of 27 actions in the game. When you're playing solo, you have exactly 27 turns to uh, get uh, your appeal and your conservation to meet. Uh, each time I take an action, this topmost cube is gonna slide to the right and later you'll see what happens when the last cube in the column slides to the right. By the way, since I played my one and only worker to the association board, I, I effectively can't perform another association action unless or until I get this worker back or I hire another worker. 
because you can't do those association actions without workers. Uh, so I'm going to perform a level 5 sponsor action to play one of my three sponsor cards. And I guess I'll just play a breeding program to get it out of the way. This is not going to be of value to me right away, but it will be when I want to perform or complete my first conservation project. And uh, I just want to get this built so it's ready to go. All right, another cube slides to the right, two turns down, 25 to go. The breeding program sponsor card, because I played it, is, is displayed to the side of my player board over here. And these all, all the cards that I play, be they sponsor cards or animal cards, are going to get splayed out here so that you can see all the icons along the top edge because for the most part those are the icons that matter now this breeding program card also has an ability that says i can gain one conservation point if i have supported five conservation projects over the course of the game that's an end game scoring ability and all those are in brown now when these cards are splayed out you can't see the end game scoring abilities but there is a brown stripe that's on the banner up here so that it reminds you that the, the, the card that you're looking at does have an endgame special ability that you might want to remind yourself of. Okay, so for round three, I've got my card action in uh, the fifth slot. So well, let's just do a card action. I'm not, uh, you know, this is early on in the game, um, and I'm not going to be too worried about anything too critical here. So with a level 5 cards action, I have a choice. I can either draw the three cards and discard one, or I can snap a card. Now, when you draw cards, you're either drawing from the top of the deck, or you're drawing from within your reputation range. That's the reason why this reputation track runs across here. Because I'm starting with one reputation, Drawing from within my reputation range means that I'm eligible to take the Indian Rhinoceros into my hand when performing a cards action. But I can't take, for example, the Sponsorship Lions card because that's to the right of my reputation token. So as I gain more reputation with my, for my zoo, I'll be able to take more and more cards from the display. Snapping a card means that you can take any one card from the display, regardless of your reputation or where it might lie in the display. So you can ignore basically these rules and you just take any one card instead of, say, drawing three and discarding one. It's called snapping a card because, yes, you're snapping it off the display, but uh, it also is that that action happens to be associated with animals that have a snapping ability like uh, crocodiles and alligators. So uh, that's why it's called snapping in the game. All right, so I am going to take a level five cards action. And I, I, I am not so interested in the Indian rhinoceros. It's a level, it's a size four animal. It's pretty expensive. Um, it also requires that my animal action be flipped over to its more advanced side. You can get these action cards flipped over. We'll talk about that uh, later on. Uh, so I'm not interested in the rhinoceros, so I think I'm just going to draw three cards from the top of the deck. And I got a Horsefield's Tarsier, which is a size one animal, a small animal. I've got a, a broad-snouted caiman, a size four animal. And I've got another sponsor card, an aquarium. Now I have to discard one, and then the card I discard doesn't have to be one of the cards that I drew. I can discard any one of these six. I think, because I'm going to probably be focusing on small animals, I'm going to get rid of the broad-snouted caiman over here. In the meantime, let me move my other two animals that I'm keeping and my, uh, this card over here, and I'll just discard the broad-snouted caiman. That's three actions down. Now my build action happens to be in the fifth slot, so I might as well perform a level 5 build action. That card says 
that I can build one building with a maximum size of X. Now buildings range in size like animals from size one buildings to size five buildings. When you're building a, a building, you're paying $2 per space it occupies. So a one space building or size one building costs $2 while a size five building costs $10. I can construct one building and I think I will probably start by building a, one, a size one enclosure, which is plenty big enough to house either one of these animals. So I'm going to select build. I'm going to choose a size one enclosure, which is basically the size of one space. It's going to cost me $2. Now when you're building, you have to build adjacent to other buildings in your zoo but your first building has to just be somewhere on the border. Uh, and remember, I think I'm going to be putting my side entrance over here. So I'm going to start over here on this five money space, which means that as soon as I cover that, I'm going to get five bucks. So the, the, the size one enclosure is going to cost me two. I'm going to get five. So I'm making a profit actually of three dollars. And my money goes up to twenty eight. But now I have an enclosure so that when I play an animal's action, which is what I'm going to do next because animals has now risen up to level five, I can play either one of these animals into my size one enclosure. So let's take an animal action of, of level five. Oops, let me unlock that. So let's take an animal's action of level five. And you can see up here that at level five, you can potentially play two animals into your zoo. But given that I only have one enclosure, uh, all, you, there are animals that can flock together and can be housed in the same enclosure. But these aren't one of those. So um, while the card allows me to play two animals, I only have one enclosure, so I can only play one of these. And I think I will start by playing, well, I can't play this one because it requires a partner zoo. And once I have the research institute and I'm over here, I'll be able to ignore that one condition because that, remember, that's the special effect that the research institute offers. Uh, so I, in the meantime, I can't play Horsefields Tarsier, but I can play Lesser Bird of Paradise. So this is going to cost me 15 bucks. It's automatically going to go into this size one enclosure. It's the only place it can go. It has a special ability which says posturing one, I may place one free kiosk or pavilion in my zoo. And after that, I'm going to gain five appeals. So my appeal is going to jump up from 20 to 25. All right, so here we go. Now my well, size one enclosure has flipped over to the other side to show that uh, it's now occupied by an animal. Now the uh, in this game you don't have to worry about which enclosures are housing which animals. You know once you put an animal down you just flip the enclosure over, you put the animal over here splayed out with all of your other cards and you can stop worrying about where it happens to be. The special ability of the Lesser Bird of Paradise is going to allow me to play a uh, kiosk or a pavilion Pavilions uh, gain you uh, appeal right away. When you play in a pavilion, you immediately get one uh, appeal. Kiosks, on the other hand, provide you with income during the break. I know I keep talking about the break, and I will explain what the break is in just a moment because we're very close to performing one. But kiosks are good for income, while pavilions are good for uh, appeal. So I think I'm going to play a kiosk right now because the break is coming up soon and uh, having a kiosk on the board might help my income just a little bit. So I'm going to put my kiosk to the southwest of this enclosure because you get one buck per every occupied building that's adjacent to your kiosks during the income phase of the when you're resolving the break. And because this enclosure is now occupied, I'll get one buck. It's not a lot, but hopefully over time that'll grow. So I'm going to put my kiosk there. And now I can 
play the second of my two animals, but I can't because I have no, no place to put it. So I'm going to cancel and another cube slides to the right. So I remember I did say you don't have to worry about where the animals are housed, but I have the benefit of using a computer program. So that happens to remember that the lesser bird of paradise is flying around over here in the east side of my uh, zoo. It's now round six. So uh, let's see. I think, given that my sponsor card has uh, risen to level four here, I can't play an association action. Remember, I don't have a worker. So I think I'll play another sponsor card. Uh, I've got a, a level four, level three, and a level five. I can't play the aquarium, but I could play either of these two. I think I'll play my engineer. So the engineer, remember, says every time I build at least one building with a build action, I can build exactly one more of the same kind at the normal cost. Now, I couldn't have played the engineer before I just did that build action because the sponsor card was back at level three at the time, and that wasn't high enough in order to play engineer. So that first build action wasn't eligible for that special ability, but this one will be. So I will now play the engineer. And by the way, it also says that at the end of the game, I, if I could completely fill up my zoo map, I'll gain an additional five appeal. If you ever do fill up your zoo map, you'll uh, you also automatically score seven appeals. So that's 12 appeal right there. I'm not sure I'm going to be focusing on filling up my zoo map, but whatever the case may be. Let's play the uh, engineer. He's going to come over here. And he doesn't do anything for me immediately, for me immediately, but he will when I do start taking more build actions. And now this is the last turn before the break. Uh, so that when the when the last cube here slides to the right, you resolve a break. Now normally you're using a break track when you're playing this game multiplayer. The, there, this is the break track up here, and if you're playing a two-player game, the token would start on this space. Three-player game would start here. A four-player game would start here. Anytime a player takes a cards action, it automatically moves to the left two spaces. That's why, if you recall, the cards action said break two at the top and then draw cards from the deck or snap. Similarly, you can move the break token if you perform a sponsor's action and take money. It says break X and gain X. So, for example, if Sponsors was in slot four and you did that action, you could uh, break four spaces. So the, the token would move four spaces to the left and you would take four dollars. For example, if it was, say, on space two when I did this break four Sponsors action, and I, I still get four dollars even though the break token only has two spaces to move. Once the break token reaches the zero space, the player who caused it to get there uh, gets an X token. I'll explain what X tokens are later on. And then it, once their turn is finished, you resolve the break uh, for all players. When you resolve the break, it involves replenishing the board, bringing tokens back, getting, giving workers back to the players, and most importantly, gaining income. I'll go through all those steps in a second, but we're about to resolve the break as soon as I finish this next turn. So this is a, essentially the last turn before the break. So now that I have my engineer, let's use it. So I'm going to perform a level three build action, which is going to allow me to build one building of size three or smaller. But my engineer is going to actually allow me to build two of those buildings. And I am going to build another size one enclosure. This time for my horse fields tarsier, whenever I can finally get it into my zoo. A level one enclosure costs me two dollars and I'm it only takes up one space just like the kiosk does and I'm going to put it over here to the northwest of my kiosk now the kiosk earns a dollar for every occupied building so it's going to get a dollar for this building over here but it's not going to get a dollar for the empty space size one enclosure but once I put the animal in there it will so for now, I'm just going to put that enclosure there, 
And now the engineer's ability automatically kicks in. My program knows all about that. And it gives me uh, the ability to place another size one enclosure for at a cost of another $2. Now I've got $11, so I've got plenty of money. And I think this other one is going to go to the southeast of the kiosk. So you can see I'm sort of getting all my buildings going over here on the eastern side of my zoo. That's going to end my seventh turn. And then we're going to go right into the break. And I'm going to tell you what, what all the different things that happened during the break. So I pay two, I pay two bucks and I get some income and stuff happens. All the tokens move back to the left on the solo board, but you'll notice one's missing now from the top. So here's what happens during the break. Basically, everybody has to discard down to their hand limit. By default, your hand limit is three cards, though there is a way to raise up your hand limit to five cards. Uh, you could see I have three cards in my hand, so I didn't have to discard down to three. If there are tokens, if there were tokens on your action cards, which can happen in rare cases when you're playing a solo game, it happens more often if you're playing a multiplayer game and you're playing with the interactive take that rules where you can sort of be mean to other players, kind of be nasty. Uh, I'm not sure I recommend you play that way. It's uh, the, the, the designer has said you can sort of play with a, a Care Bear variant where you ignore those interactive uh, elements and instead you do something different. You effectively play as if you were performing or playing a solo game. Uh, but that's the, for the most part that the tokens are going to sort of land on these action cards when negative effects are played out for the most part. We're not playing with negative effects in this game, so we don't have to worry about those tokens. But there is a chance that one might appear uh, if I play this, the right kind of animal. Finally, workers come home from the association board. So you can see that my worker is back over here. Any tokens that were removed from the association board are replenished. So the university that I removed earlier has been replenished from the supply, which means if I were playing multiplayer, other players could now get that university. I can't, however. You, uh, all three of the universities that you gain have to be, you have to get one of each. You can't get two of the same. In step four, when resolving the break, the left two cards of the display are discarded into the discard pile. All the other cards slide to the left, and two more cards are drawn from the deck, and those fill in the empty spaces on the right. So it's a way to keep the uh, display uh, moving along. And then most importantly, in step five of, the, of resolving the break, players earn income. So the first thing you earn is an, an amount of money depending upon what your appeal is. Now, because I'm on space 25 to the appeal track, you'll see that there's a black uh, border over here that says 18 on it, which means by having 25 of appeal during the, the resolve break step, I gain 18 bucks for that. Recall that I will also I also gain one dollar for this kiosk because of the adjoining building, and there are other ways to make money, but that's pretty much it. So I basically should have gotten eighteen bucks for the for the appeal and one buck for the kiosk. And if I look over here, you can see I got eighteen bucks for the twenty five appeal and one dollar for my kiosk. So that's why my balance is now up to 20, 28 bucks. In a multiplayer game at this point, the break token would be restored to its starting space depending upon the player count. Again, in a solo game, you don't play with the break track. And if any time a card says break two or break four or break X, you just ignore that step because there are automatic breaks built in to the solo game. This last, this top cube is now missing from the solo board. That's because it has been moved over to the association board to fill one of these donation spaces. It's basically uh, is sort of blocking me off uh, and making it more expensive to make donations to a conservatory. I will be making those later on, but uh, for now, 
that pretty much means it's now a little bit more expensive to make a donation. You have to spend $5 to gain one conservation point. And the next break is going to happen that much sooner because now once six tokens move to the right, the break will happen. So as these tokens get removed from the solar board, the breaks happen faster and faster and faster. And the game ends when you've got two tokens remaining and they're on in the right column. In the meantime, it's round eight, and I've got my association worker back. So I'm going to perform a level five association action. And with a strength of five, I can complete a conservation project. Now you might ask, what conservation project can you possibly fulfill? Well, I have one bird, the lesser bird of paradise. I can go over here to the birds base conservation project. The smallest amount you'd have to claim requires that you have two bird icons. I only have one bird icon, but remember I have breeding program, which gives me these two tokens. And I can play one of those tokens to substitute as some icon. So I can pretend that I have two birds instead of one. So I'm going to use this breeding program token to get myself onto the birds conservation project and get a, get a two conservation points right away. So I'm going to click on this space to say that this is the uh, conservation project that I want to achieve. Uh, my program knows automatically that uh, I've got this uh, these tokens over here so it knows to, to uh, take one away in order to, to make up for that missing bird. In the meantime, I need a cube to put on this conservation project. And when you need cubes for conservation projects, they come from the left side of the board. If you take a cube from this top section, you can get a bonus right away as well as a bonus during every income phase. That's what this hand icon means. But if you take a bonus from down here, you only get it once right away. You don't get it during the income phase because there's no hand icon down here. The cube I'm going to use to put on this conservation project is going to be this cube here that says I can gain five money now and five money during every income phase from this uh, going forward every time I resolve a break. So I'm going to take, I'm going to take that cube. Uh, because these two things are kind of happening simultaneously, the cube and the conservation points, I can sort of play with the order in which these are resolved, but it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to take the money and then get the two points for the conservation project. However, the two points for the conservation project are going to move me to space two, and you can see that I can get an immediate bonus pre-printed on the game board, one of these two bonuses. These bonus tiles were randomly played out here at the beginning during setup. There's a nine different tiles you can randomly choose from, but these are pre-printed on the game board. And I'll talk about these two in a second because I'm going to have to select one of those. So let me resolve the bonus and take my five bucks and then I'll get my two conservation points and then I have to make a decision about this bonus. So do I want to either flip an action card to its more powerful side or do I want to hire another worker? There are only four ways in the game that you can flip an action over to its more powerful side. You, by, by gaining two uh, conservation points, by getting to space five of the reputation track, I'm still over here on space one, by gaining your second partner zoo, you can see that same icon is here, and by gaining your second university. So as soon as I gain my second university, I'm going to be able to flip one of these cards to its more powerful side. If I give up this bonus, it means that at best, well, at best, if you get all four of these bonuses uh, to flip cards to their powerful side, you're only going to be able to flip four of your five cards. You're not going to be able to flip that last one. So you're going to have to decide which one is less important to you. If I forego this bonus right now and don't take it, and instead decide to, if I decide to take a hire a worker instead, that's gone forever. I'm never going to be able to achieve, get land on this space again because you can't lose conservation points. 
So uh, that's it. I'm giving up this bonus, and at best, I'll be able to flip over three action cards instead of four. During all that discussion, I've thought to myself, what, do, what would I prefer? Do I want to flip an action card, or, what, or do I want to hire a worker? I think I want to hire a worker, actually. Um, my one worker restricts me to one association action during every set of rounds before the break occurs. But by having a second worker, it means I can perform a second association action once the association action is strong enough. I think I'm going to take that worker. It may be a mistake, but eh, it's not going to be the end of the world. So I'm going to hire another worker. It's going to come from down here on the bottom of my player board. It's going to move up here, so it means I will have one available worker now, even though one's on the, on the association board. And another token slides to the right, and we're now in round nine. What do I want to do now? I think I want to play my side entrance. So this is a special building that's going to get laid out, played out uh, placed on the, on the board. As soon as I play this card, it requires a strength of three, and that's where my sponsor card happens to be right now. So I'm going to perform a level three sponsor action and play the side entrance. That means that I get to put the side entrance somewhere on the board, on the map. Remember, it has to be placed on two border spaces, but it need not be adjacent to other buildings. So I'm going to place it way over here so it's adjacent to the Research Institute, and that will unlock my ability right away and let me start playing animals by meeting one fewer requirement. So it'll mean I'll be able to, for example, play this Tarsier, in, because I, even though I don't have its partner Zoo, that's one condition, one requirement I can ignore. So I'm going to put the... I'm sure I think I'll play this... The other benefit of the side entrance is that over where is it over here it says during the income phase when you're resolving the break you just like a kiosk you gain money for each building except empty standard enclosures that are adjacent to the side entrance but unlike a kiosk instead of gaining one buck per adjacent building you gain two bucks per adjacent building and also if at the end of the game you've completed your zoo you filled out your zoo map you get another five points so clearly, all these cards I'm, are, I'm playing are sort of leaning me toward filling up my zoom map, but I'm not sure that's going to be something I'm going to be focusing on, which is kind of too bad because that would be very nice to get that. What is that so far? 7 plus 5 plus 5, 17 appeal right there. I'm going to lay out my... Uh, my uh, side entrance like this so there are more spaces that are adjacent to it and therefore I'll be able to collect more income over time and that's that action so now you can see I've got three cards played over here the breathing program the engineer and the side entrance and one animal is in my zoo the lesser bird of paradise it's round 10 and uh, I've got two cards in my hand, so I think I'll play a cards action, strength five. I've got one reputation, which means I could take the cassowary here. But because it's a level five cards action, I can also snap one card from the display. And what's out here? Are there any small animals? Uh, there is a European pond turtle here. There's a domestic rabbit here, which requires a petting zoo. And this is a level, this is a size three. So uh, I could snap this turtle, or I could just wait until it sort of slides over to the left as more and more cards are removed from the display. When you're playing solo, you don't have to worry about other players removing cards from the display. You just have to worry about the, the display refreshing and recycling during the break. So, worst case is the European Pond Turtle at the next break is going to slide two spaces to the left and be here, and the Domestro Rabbit will be over here. So, I can sort of bide my time and wait for those to uh, come to me. So, in the meantime, I think I will simply draw three cards like I did the last time. 
And let's see what I got. Well, I caught a size one animal, a veiled chameleon. It, it can be housed either in a size one enclosure or a reptile house. Now you can't build a reptile house or for that matter, the other special building, which is a, uh, a large bird air aviary, aviary until your uh, build action has been flipped over to a level two. So I can't build these now, but maybe sometime later I'll be, I'll be building a reptile house. I also drew another small animal, an Ecuadorian squirrel monkey. That's from the Americas. This one's from Asia. That's kind of nice because of that Asia-based conservation card. And I have another sponsor card, an hydrologist, which clearly has something to do with water. I have to discard one card. Uh, I think I'm going to get rid of the squirrel monkey. Even though it's a small animal, I'm hoping that I can play both of these sponsor cards at some point later in the game. So I'm going to hold on to the Tarsier, a size one, and the Veil Chameleon, another size one. I happen to have two size one enclosures over here waiting for them, which is another reason why. And, and therefore, I'm going to part with the Equatorial Squirrel Monkey. And now it's round 11. And uh, speak of the devil, I'm going to perform a level 5 animal action and put these two animals in my two size 1 enclosures. I can now, I don't have any requirements that I need to meet for the chameleon. I did have to have this partner zoo for the tarsier, but now I can ignore it thanks to my research institute. So I'm going to perform a level 5 animals action, which lets me play two animals. And the first one is going to be the Tarsier. That's going to cost me 14 bucks, but its special ability says advance the Bray token four spaces, which you ignore in a solo game, but you gain $4. I'm also going to get two reputation out of this because the Tarsier is just very fascinating creature. It looks like this little rodent, <laughs> um, but they are pretty rare. And this one's from Asia, and it's going to attract a lot of people to the zoo. So I'm going to, it doesn't really matter which enclosure I put it in over here. I'll stick it over here. That enclosure flips over to its occupied side. And now the tarsier is over here, and uh, I have hopefully gained four bucks. So let's see, I lost 14, I paid 14 for the Tarsier, I resolved the effect, I got four money back for the Tarsier special ability, and I also gained three appeal and two reputation that are shown down here. So now my reputation is over here, and that means I have two cards I could potentially take from the display. Now, for the second animal that I can play, I'm going to play the Veiled Chameleon. That's going to go in the other size one enclosure. This has a snapping one ability. The, I guess the Chameleon snaps. It, it kind of looks pretty foreboding, so I, I guess I'm not surprised that it snaps at you. But it's going to allow me to gain any one card from the display. Now this kiosk is going to earn three bucks. We're having three occupied enclosures next to it. And this uh, Veil Chameleon lets me snap a card from the display. Any one card. Well, there's... I'm looking for size one or two. The Domestic Rabbit, but I haven't seen any petty, other petting zoo animals, so I'm holding off on that. There's this European Pond Turtle. Um... Oh, it requires a size one enclosure next to water. I don't have a size one enclosure for it yet. Hmm. I can also take this marabou. That doesn't have any special uh, requirements, but it doesn't. It does need a size three enclosure. Or I could take this African spurred tortoise. 
cost 22 bucks it's pretty expensive and uh, it's size 3 or it can go into a reptile house that's useful if I'm going to be playing a lot of reptiles and it also gives me a conservation point um, question is am I gonna have enough money when am I gonna do this animals action with these cards well it won't be for a while because my animals action is gonna slide down here to slot one and probably by then I'm gonna have a break and I'll have more money question is can I afford the African spur tortoise it would be nice to get that conservation point uh, I think I will grab it and hope for the best. There's my four appeal for my veiled chameleon, not for my African spurred tortoise. That's not in my zoo yet. So I'm going to slide that over here. And now we're, we've moved into round 12. And, uh, what do I want to do now? Oh, I think I'm going to take a level four association action. I can get another university, which is going to let me flip over an action card. And I can take in a university that gives me two reputation. That's going to get my reputation up to five and let me flip over a second action card. So now I'm flipping. So I'm going to take this university. I can't take this one. I can't have two of the same. So I'm taking this one. That gets my reputation up to five. And now both of these are going to let me flip two, uh, two action cards. I definitely want to flip my association action to a stronger side. And uh, this is going to come back to haunt me. I'd like to flip my cards action so I can get reputation beyond level nine. But instead, I want to flip my build action to its more powerful side. That's going to let me build on these special spaces here. But more importantly, it's going to let me build multiple. This is the stronger build action card. It lets you build one or more different buildings with a total maximum size of X. So it's a much more flexible action card. So I'm going to flip build over to its other side. And now it's round 13, the round just before the break. And I'm going to perform this uh, advanced build action right now at a strength of five. I know I need a size three enclosure for my tortoise. So let's get that going. I'm going to build that right here and cover this space over that lets me move any card that I want over into slot one. I don't anticipate doing a cards action anytime soon, so I'm going to slide the cards action down to slot one. More importantly, that slides association and animals to the right and makes them stronger. And now my engineer is going to let me build another size one enclosure, which I will put on this space and cover and get five bucks. I don't have the six. Oh, I'm not keeping track of how much money I've got. I've only got three bucks. Ah, uh, shoot, shoot, shoot. Okay, well, I can build a size. I'm not going to be able to make use of the engineer's special ability, but I can build a size one enclosure. And maybe put that here. Well, maybe I should build a pavilion instead. Instead of a size one enclosure. Hmm. Well, let's hope I can get another size one animal. <laughs> this might be a mistake. But more importantly, I'm covering up this five money space so I can get some money and I can place uh, one more five, uh, one more size one or size two building, and I think I'm going to um, build another kiosk, and I'll put that next to my side entrance, so the kiosk will get a buck for being next to the side entrance, and the side entrance will earn two bucks for being next to the kiosk. 
So let's select a kiosk and put it right here. And that uses up all five of my strength, and that's the end of my action. Now the break occurs, and I get some desperately needed funds. I get 21 bucks for my appeal. This kiosk probably should have earned three bucks. This one should have earned one, so that's four bucks for my kiosks. Two bucks for the side entrance being next to this. Let's make sure this is all right. So uh, 21 for my appeal, four bucks for the kiosks. That's right, two bucks for the side entrance being next to a kiosk, and five bucks for the cube I removed earlier that I put on the conservation project. Okay, it's round 14, the halfway point of the game. I'm going to perform a level 5 sponsor action. I should point out, by the way, that when you pick a card and you want to perform its action, you cannot perform its action and instead just take a, an X token. And you still have to slide the card to slot 1, but you can always choose just to ignore the actions and take a, a, an X token. But it's a pretty weak play, and uh, that would really be a last resort sort of a play. But I thought I would mention it. Um, for my level 5, I can do either play either the Hydrologist or the Aquarium. I'm going to play the Aquarium. It's a special building. It has to be next to two water spaces. It scores... Every time you place uh, a card in your display over here that has a water icon on it, from now on I'm going to earn two appeal per water icon. Sponsor cards, however, count themselves. So the aquarium will get me two appeal for each of its two water icons here, and uh, that's going to uh, gain me four appeal just for playing the aquarium. It's this odd-shaped thing. Um, and it has to be next to two water. It requires I have three reputation. I cannot ignore that requirement. This research institute only applies to animal cards. So I, but I do have three reputation. My reputation is now at five, so that's not a problem. So I'm going to play the aquarium. And uh, the odd thing about these weird, unique enclosures that come from cards like the aquarium or side entrance is that they can't be flipped. So it limit the there you can't flip them over and therefore it limits the different ways that you can place them. Now I can place it here, uh, or I could place it here. I think I'd rather place it here. Yeah, I'm happy with that space. And then choose a card that you'd like to take from within your reputation range. What? Oh, did I just cover? I just covered a space like this space here that lets me take a card within reputation range. So what do I want to take? I can take the rabbit. I'm not going to take it for now. I can take the pond turtle. Shoot, I didn't put this one space enclosure next to water, so that's kind of off limits. Or I could take the marabou. And what's the ability? Do I uh, let's draw one card from within reputation range, not snap? So I can't take just take any card. So I think I'm going to take the marabou. It's cheap and it's easy to place. And it's size 3, which can go right into my size 3 enclosure. And for what it's worth, it's a bird. But... I'm done kind of playing birds, so that's less important to me. Okay, taking the marabou. My peel goes up to 36, and it's now round 15. And maybe I'll place my tortoise and my marabou into the zoo. That costs, it's going to cost 32 bucks. I've got 36. That's pretty expensive. Uh, oh, wait a minute. The spurt horse is going into the size 3 enclosure. <laughs> Crap. Oh, man. I have no place for the marabou. Was that a mistake? Maybe I should have taken the pond turtle. Darn it. 
maybe I should have put this one enclosure over here, but then I wouldn't have gotten the five money. Uh, so many things affect other things. Um, well, whatever the case may be, I'm going to place, take an animal, a level five animal action. I'm going to place my African spurred tortoise to get the six appeal and the one conservation. It does let me sell up to three cards from my hand for four bucks each. I could, I suppose I could sell the marabou for four bucks if I want to. Let me think about that. That's going to go into here, the, the tortoise is. Truth is, if I ever do play, if I ever do build a reptile house, the tortoise can go move, get moved into the into the reptile house, in which case it'll free up the size one enclosure, the size three enclosure, and then I might be able to place the marabou in a later turn. So, should I sell it or not? Uh, let's see, it gives me four appeal. Uh, it lets me scavenge, shuffle the discard pile and draw two cards, add one to your hand, discard the other. Oh, I don't know. I, I, I don't have a lot of money. And it is early in the... You know what? Maybe I will sell it for four bucks. If I do a build action, that's going to cost money. Yeah, I'm going to sell it and take four bucks. So now I'm up to 18 bucks. I'm not going to sell my hydrologist. I am going to place that when I can, when I can, as soon as I can do a level five sponsor action. So I'm going to end my turn there. So my spurred tortoise gets me six appeal and a conservation. My conservation's up at three. My appeal is now at 42. So little by little, I'm moving ahead. I'm not going to play a second animal, so I'm going to cancel that and end my turn. And now, I think I'm going to complete another conservation project. Yes. I have species diversity here. I've got one, two, three different types of animals. A bird, a mammal, and two reptiles. So that's three, but I still have a cube from breeding program, which would be a, I can treat it as a fourth. And that would allow me to play to the middle space here of the species diversity project, which is good for three conservation points. That's going to get me another bonus when I get over to this, across this space here. So I'm going to select that conservation project. I, uh, let's see, I have to select a cube. <laughs> it's ironic if I decide to take my worker, a third worker, when I could have flipped over something like that action, that, like the cards action, and not have to worry about my reputation. Uh... I think I will take the third worker. When you want to take another association action before the break, if I wanted to complete another conservation project, I would need two workers. The first worker lets you take one action in one task, but in a future turn, you could place two more workers there and perform that action a second time. You can't do it three times, but you can do it twice. And I've got one worker, a second worker would give me two workers. That would theoretically allow me to perform two association tasks during the same phase before the break. So I think uh, I've, I am going to take this bonus cube and get a, hire another worker. I can resolve that before getting the points for the conservation project. That's fine. I get uh, points here, and now I can either gain 3x tokens or take 2 reputation. Uh, my reputation's at 5. Getting 2 would get me to 7. Just shy of getting my last worker. But that's important to know because my last worker has a 2 conservation icon below it, so it'll get me 2 conservation points as soon as I get um, my last worker. So one more reputation 
gets me here, which gets me my last worker, which gets me two more conservation. In the meantime, I'm going to take that two reputation. It gets me up to space seven. And now I have more cards available to me uh, from the display. I have used up all my strength, but I have I can pay five money of my 18 to get another conservation point. Gets me that much closer to the eighth space. So that was good. I'm happy with that. I'm out of cards, kind of, and I think I will perform a level five cards action. I can either snap a card from the display or draw three from within reputation range or from the blindly from the top of the pile. And then I have to discard one if I go that route. What would I snap if I were going to snap a card? Well, there's that turtle still out there. It's going to go away at the next break if I don't grab it. How badly do I want that turtle? Um, should I snap it? Or should I just go with, uh, or should I draw? Oh, there's Serengeti National Park over here. That's nice. I can release an animal into the wild that has an African icon, and I do have this tortoise that I could release back into the wild. Then again, my associations at level that allows me to play conservation projects directly from within my reputation range, so I can just wait for this card to slide to the left. I don't have to just grab it and get it into my hand right away. Maybe instead of going after the turtle, I'll just go with I'll just take my chances and draw three cards from the top and then discard one. Let's see what I get. Geological, a conservation project that focuses on rock icons. Got none of those. That's no, no value. A size four lion that requires three predators is not any interest to me. Uh, the rock monitor is... That is a size 2 animal. Um, in the meantime, I'll just get rid of geological and discard that. Although the line can go at some point, too. All right, it's round 18. Let's build that reptile house. I've been talking about it. Let's finally build it. I've got 13 bucks, just enough money. It's going to cost me 10 And it's this big, ungainly thing, but I think I can put it right there. I can cover this space with a an X token bonus on it, so I can get an X token out of it. X tokens are used to boost your the strength of your action. Um, if it's not at level five, or maybe you want to boost a level five to level six, because there are some sponsor cards that require six, uh, level six or six strength. Anyway, I think I'm going to put my uh, reptile house here. It's next to two water, so it will satisfy the requirements of the rock monitor. Oh, wait a minute. The rock monitor requires rocks. Oh, and that's not, um, though it is a reptile, but it, it only requires one rock icon. And that is adjacent to, that's adjacent to two rocks if I place it there, so I'm fine. It's adjacent to this rock and this rock, so I'm fine. I've, I've got all my bases covered. I've got two water icons and two rock icons next to it. That's why I'm putting my reptile house. Now, when you build a reptile house uh, or a large bird aviary, for that matter, if you've got any animals that can go into it, like I do, you have one opportunity to, to move them over and free up their their um, their enclosures. So my African, uh, where are you, African spurred tortoise? That's down here. That's in size three. That's that's in this enclosure here. And my veiled chameleon. Well, do I want to? Yes, I want to move the African spurred tortoise to the reptile house. That's going to use up two of the five spaces of the reptile house. 
my reptile house keeps track of how many cubes are on it over here so I can fit up to two spaces worth you can see that the turtle takes up uh, the tortoise takes up two of the five spaces so yes I do want to move the tortoise over that means you can go through your zoo and just look for a size 3 enclosure and free it up assuming that the tortoise was there even though you don't have to worry about where animals really are you figure that the tortoise got placed somewhere in some size 3 or larger uh, uh, enclosure so now my tortoise isn't here anymore this is now empty and now it's asking if I want to move my veiled chameleon my um, it's this guy right here it takes up zero space so it doesn't even use up a space in my uh, it's so tiny but that's going to free this enclosure up and now I'm using two of my five spaces in my reptile house it's round 19 let's do a level 5 sponsor action play my hydrologist now the hydrologist says for each space I cover from now on next to water that's next to water space I can gain a buck so uh, let's play a sponsor action play a, put a, play the hydrologist and that's three appeal right there and I got two more okay so why did I get all that appeal three appeal for the for the hydrologist because I had three water icons two appeal for the aquarium because the appeal says every time you play a water icon into your zoo gain two appeal that's why I just gained five appeal okay where are we round 20 is it time to get the rock monitor or should I try to get a cards action going and get some better cards into my hand I can't do anything with this lion hmm if I do the cards action it would let me draw two and discard one and I could get two cards into my hand and get rid of this lion and hope for the best and then maybe I could do an animals action uh, although I could draw them, some of these cards but uh, I don't think I really need any of these uh, sponsorship vultures, nah. Expert on Asia, nah. Well, maybe. Gives me one appeal per Asian icon. I've got a couple of those. I think I'll draw and go for go with the hope for the best. I got a size three Japanese macaque. That could go in this. No, it can't because it requires a size three next to water shoot 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 that's a problem I've got bird breeding program oh how am I doing bird wise I only have one bird well let's get rid of the lion that wasn't the end of the world I might be able to do something with this later on it does require that I have a partner zoo basically requires a bird and a partner zoo from the same continent I haven't I haven't taken gotten any partner zoos yet but maybe later we'll see all right uh, round 21 so I, I did a cards action but I can't play this the stinking macaque because even uh, because I can ignore the well I do have an Asian icon but the research institute doesn't let me ignore rock and water icons rock monitor lets me sell cards I could sell the Japanese macaque if I wanted to this is an example of a card that has an interactive effect here you can see it's uh, pilfering which lets you steal cards from another player 
but when you can play the Care Bear version, and in which case you just do the solo effect instead, which says draw two cards. Too bad I didn't place that next to water. Uh, I might as well get my rock monitor and put it into my reptile house. It takes up one space. It will gain me five appeal. It's something. It's going into the reptile house. So I'm using up three spaces of my five. Oh, I wanted to use Serengeti here and get an, uh, release an animal into the wild. I can do that as soon. Well, my association's at four. I could spend an X token, make it a level five association. Oh, wait a minute. Let me finish. Do I want to sell my Japanese macaque for four bucks? I've got 25. I'm not short of money. Let me hold on to it for now. You never know. Oh, cancel. And I'm not playing a second animal. So now my association action is level five. Now I can complete a project and I can release an animal into the wild and I can release the spurred tortoise and free up two spaces in my reptile house. I won't lose the one conservation that I got for it, but I will lose the six appeal. But this conservation action gets me four conservation points and a reputation. And getting my reputation, my reputation will let me get my last worker. And my last worker will get me two more conservation points. Oh yeah. Association action, complete a conservation action. I can, because this is level two, I can choose a confirmation project within my reputation range from the display. It's going to be this Serengeti National Park. Uh, I can, I have a size three, and according to my program, I have both a size three and a small animal. I could fill in either one of those two spaces, but not both. Uh, what do I have here? Well, I was going to put my tortoise. Oh, I guess I could re I could release my rock monitor if I wanted to. But I want to release my tortoise. It's worth more conservation points. It's worth uh, four conservation points. Well, no, wait a minute. Yeah, it's a size three. It's worth four conservation points. The, the rock monitor would be only be worth two conservation points. It's a smaller... Uh, uh, three conservation points. It's a smaller animal. Okay, so I am going to choose this card. I'm going to fill the middle position. It gets put into the top part of the display here, so it's removed from the display and stuck above the uh, uh, above the association board. If there were other cards in the display, they would have shifted off to the right. I have to choose a cube to put into that project. Um, oh, this would be nice. Move any action card to slot one of your player board twice. And I can do that immediately, and I can do it during every break. I, I, don't want, I like that. I'll do that. And I can do it right away. What cards do I want to move to my... What cards won't I be using anytime soon? I think I will move build to slot one. And uh, did I have a, a sponsor card in, in my hand? I don't, so I can move sponsors to slot one. There's my conservation points. I've got four conservation points there, up to 11. 
I've got a bonus here, and this is going to require that I discard one of my two scoring cards. I would have had to do that by the end of the game, so if I didn't do it here, I would have done it eventually, so it doesn't matter. That's going to get done way, one way or another. Do I want to build a size 3 enclosure? Oh, I do, for my Japanese macaque, and I want to put it next to water. And I want to put it right up here where it's going to cover this university icon and get me my third university. Which increases my uh, hand limit to five cards and gets me another reputation, which gets me my last worker and two more conservation points. So now my conservation's up here at 13. Check the log, make sure that all worked. Yep, there's my conservation, my last worker. And now I have to discard a scoring tile for having passed space 10 over here. So I'll get rid, well, do I want a small animal zoo or a sponsored zoo? Small animal zoo, score one, two, three, or four conservation at the end for have, end of the game for having three, six, eight, or 10 small animals. I've got one, two, three, four so far. I did have five, but I released one into the wild a second ago, and so it left my hand and I lost some reputation I lost some appeal for it. Uh, I haven't lost the appeal yet, but it should happen anytime now. Uh, let's uh, or sponsored zoo. Uh, it's a similar kind of card, just means I uh, get points for having sponsor cards. I've got five of those so far. Either one of these might be good. What's in the display? There's a size 2 Mamba over there. There is a, uh, a size 2 ca uh, Caracal over here. Both small animals. I think I'm going to go with small animal zoo, so I'm going to get rid of sponsored zoo. And I'm just going to go heavy into small animals. Okay, I lost the two. Well, the two. Well, there goes my appeal going backwards, and it freed up two spaces in my reptile house. So I lost my six appeal, but I didn't lose the one conservation that I got for the tortoise, fortunately. And now, if I want to, I can donate by spending seven bucks. I will do that and get another conservation point, which will get me up to seven, uh, get me up to fourteen conservation. That triggers a break. Uh, I got twenty-four bucks for having forty-six appeal, four bucks for my kiosks, and five bucks for my cube. And now I get to move two action cards into the first slot again. And I think I'm just going to move build and sponsors again to get association up to level three. And I'll be able to do an association action that much sooner. So let's move build and let's move sponsors. We're near the end of the game here. The game ends when you're down to the last two cubes over here on the right. It's round 23. I end at round 27. I've got five turns left, and I have a gap here. I've got, I'm way down here, and my conservation's up here. I have got to do something about that, and it's quick if I want to try to win this game. I gotta worry. So many things I've, I gotta, I've gotta worry about here. I've maxed out my reputation at nine, so that's not going any higher because my cards action hasn't flipped. What a mistake that was. Um, I never did really use that extra worker. I don't think. Shoot. I gotta get small animals into my zoo. Got to get my appeal back up. What if I spent two turns to get this Mamba and this Caracal? Yeah. My cards action is in level five. 
Let's take a level five cards action. I can draw three cards from within my reputation range. Both the Mamba and the Caracal are. So I'll take those two. I can take a third. I don't think I want to sponsor vultures. Oh, each time a reptile icon is played, it gained three bucks, but I don't know if I'm getting any more reptiles at this point. This would have been nice to have earlier. Uh, I guess I'll just draw from the top. And then I have to discard. Well, I got a Chinese water dragon. Size one can go into the reptile house and not take up any space. What a great card. What do I want to get rid of? Bird breeding? Um... I still only have one bird icon. Oh, but wait a minute. Bird and a partner zoo. So it would mean I'd have to have the Australian partner zoo. Ah, I haven't gotten any partner zoos, zoos yet. I wonder if I'm ever going to do that. Uh, I will get rid of the Japanese macaque. Although it could go into that size three enclosure. The Caracal can also go in a size 3 enclosure. That's only worth 4 appeal. The Macaque is worth 18, and it gives me another Asia icon, which could come in handy. It is more expensive, but I got, I'm flush with money now. I'm going to get rid of the Caracal. Slide these cards over so all my animals are together. Now I want to play a level 5 animals action. I am definitely going to move the Mamba over. That's going to get me two more X tokens, up to three. Those might come in handy later on. So this is going to cost me 13 bucks. Take up one space in my reptile house. I, since I got rid of the tortoise earlier, I've got plenty of room in my reptile house. Four spaces over there. Uh, it uh, requires that I have an African icon and a reptile. I have both of those, but I could ignore one of those requirements, but it doesn't matter. I'm not really getting much benefit out of my research institute either. Uh, let's go ahead and play that. And that's going to go on the reptile house. That's going to get my appeal up to 52. And I guess I should play this macaque for 18 bucks and hold on to the water dragon for now. Because this is worth seven and it'll let me draw two more cards, which will save me on having to perform a cards action. So let's play the macaque. It has to go into this enclosure next to water. Can't go into this one down here. I drew a perfect, a size one common wall lizard. It requires that. Uh, it could go into the reptile house as long as it's next to, next to rock, which it is. I got a polar bear exhibit, which I don't think is of any value to me. Each time a bear icon is played into your zoo, I have not seen any bear icons. But that's worth two appeal, but I don't, I, I'm not too worried about that. Uh, that's it. I'm down, I'm, I'm down to my last four turns. So where, where do I stand? My appeal's up at 61. My conservation's over here at 14. Can I close that gap? I think I might be able to close that gap. Let's see. I've got three Asia icons. One, two, three with the macaque. Where's that Asia card? Three icons. Oh, it's only good for two conservation. 
but I can get two conservation there and spend money to get a third conservation. That's three conservation points, which gets me up. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to do an association action. I'm going to go to the lowest level of the, uh, <clears throat> of the Asian conservation project. Uh, for my bonus, is there a card worth snapping? No, 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 no. Maybe size two gives me a reputation which I can't gain because I'm maxed out and five appeal and what I have over here I've got zoo school that might be interesting one reputation but one conservation point more importantly yeah that might come in handy maybe I'll snap zoo school and I can take this bonus I think this bonus, I could take the X tokens, but this bonus can let me shift two cards over to slot one that I don't plan to use, which gets other cards slid over to the right. I think it's, I think I'm going to take the snap action. I'll resolve it right away, and I'm going to snap the zoo school for one conservation. Has to be on two border spaces. Take one card from the deck or in reputation range. And if I put it near water, I might get some other bonuses thanks to my other cards. So, yeah, I'm going to take Zoo School. And now I can make a donation. It's going to cost me 10 bucks. I've got plenty of money. That's going to get my conservation up to 16. Oh, yeah. Although there's another break. Uh, I can snap another card thanks to this cube bonus. Um, Adventure Playground, Four Appeal, Red Shanked Duke. Well, that's a size four. I have no place for that. Bald Eagle, size four. This taper. Cost me 17 is worth 5 appeal. Well, I get to snap something. Explorer, each time you gain a continent or animal category icon that's not near your zoo, gain 1 appeal or 2 bucks. And 2 bucks. Adventure Playground, worth 4 spaces, has to be next to a rock space. I still have no chance of filling up my zoo. It's too late in the game. I really neglected that. Which is which is unfortunate. I don't know. I guess I'll take the taper. You know what? Oh, uh, I, my hand limits is now five, and that's done first. So I can get to the sixth card. Get my sixth card. I don't have to get rid of it. That's done early on in the in the break. So. Uh, now I can move two action cards to slot one again. And is that going to be build and cards again? I got plenty of cards. And I don't plan to build at this point. I think I'm going to move build and cards again. I'll hold on to sponsors. Maybe I'll play Polar Bear Exhibit. Probably not. Oh, no, I want to play Zoo School. That's what I want to play. It is round 26, my last two turns, and i got to close this gap. Uh, I only have one bird, so I can't... Oh, wait a minute. I don't have a partner zoo, so I can't do bird breeding program.
You know what? This didn't replenish. It's a bug. Technically, that should have replenished. Okay, so these sl cards slid left, and an expert in Predators came out, which is nothing to me. Hmm, Zoo School gets me conservation, but this only gets me 7 Appeal. What's better? 7 Appeal would get me from 61 to 68. That's effectively two conservation points closer. That's actually more valuable. I think I'm going to place those animals. Let's spend a token, perform an animal's action. Actually, this Chinese water dragon is even, that's worth three appeal. Can also sell cards for money, although I got plenty of money. I want to get the most appeal. I want to get this taper. So let's play the taper. It goes in the size three enclosure. The taper digging three, dig one, discard one card from the display and replenish or discard one card from your hand and draw one other from the deck. Choose a card in the display or your hand to discard and then replenish. Well, Um, if I replenish the display, it doesn't help. Well, yeah, it doesn't help me because the, this African bush elephant will slide over, but I, that's not interested in that. But if I get rid of a card in my hand, like this bird breeding program, because I only have one bird. But what if I draw, draw another bird? You know what? I'll just get rid of polar bear exhibit. And what did I get? Primate breeding program requires a primate and a partner zoo, which I don't have. Darn it. I think I'm done completing conservation projects for now. I've, I've completed all, all of those. Uh... Well... Uh, I guess I'm placing the Chinese, uh, choose a card on the display or your hand is card and then replenish. I thought I did that. Do I get to do it again? Oh, I can do it up to three times? Okay, let's get rid of primate breeding program. No, let's hold on to that in case I get another primate. And let's get rid of zoo school. No, let's hold on to zoo school. <laughs> let's get rid of... Common Wall Wizard. I'm just looking for a card that's worth more appeal than the three from the Water Dragon. I got a Bolivian Red Howler. Requires a size three enclosure, which I don't have. So it's going to be the Water Dragon. Into my Reptile House. The Water Dragon lets me sell up to two cards for four bucks, which doesn't really matter. I don't need the money. I might as well sell, because I can't use this. I only have one primate. Oh, I have two primate icons. That's worth two conservation. Oh! I don't need this. I only have one bird. Oh, I can perform a conservation project. Are there any projects up here? There are not. But I can do this one. Oh, shoot, it requires a partner zoo. Oh, I'm, dig I'm still digging here for money. Uh, I, I'm not going to have a partner zoo. This is, I'm going into my last turn here. Uh, I'll just get rid of the red howler. Last turn of the game. This is where I am. I just need the one conservation. I'm fine. I can just play Zoo School. Level 5 sponsor. And I'm going to get conservation from my, uh, from my small animal zoo. Because I now have 6 small animals. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 small animals. Uh, so I'm just going to play a level 5 sponsor. Play Zoo School. This has to be placed somewhere on the border. I can 
tuck it right in here and not get a reputation for it. You do not resolve the last break once your two tokens are over here on the right, by the way. That's a perfectly legal place for zoo school. It's going to get me the one conservation that closes the gap. And the game's over, and I resolve my endgame scoring cards. I won with a score of 7. So I ended the game with 71 appeal and 18 conservation. Breeding program, which uh, I think probably required that I fill my zoom app. No, that required that I complete five conservation projects. I only completed one, two, three, four. So I got zero points for the breeding program. I got zero for engineer. That was fill the zoom app. So was side entrance. I didn't do either of those. Aquarium required that I have six water icons. I had three water icons. Four water, five water icons. Darn it. <laughs> one more, that would have gotten one more conservation. Small Animal Zoo got me two conservation. So that put me at space 20 of the conservation track. When you're ready to complete your, compute your score, you take your appeal, which is 71, and you subtract the lower of the numbers in the range where your conservation is. So it's 71 minus 64 is how I got my final score of seven points. All you need is zero points in order to win the solo game. Uh, obviously, I did pretty darn well. And uh, I guess the next time I play a solo game, I can just, uh, instead of starting out at 20 appeal, maybe start out at 15 appeal and make it a little that much harder. But that's how you play a solo game of Ark Nova. I really like this game. I, I just love the way all everything works. I love the combos that you can generate. All the chaining combos are very interesting. That's always very exciting when that happens. And it just makes me think in lots of different ways. Lots of different ways to go. Decisions like, do I flip the card or, or hire a worker? Boy, I'll never, I'll never live that one down. But um, anyhow, that's how you play Arc Nova. If you think my program, if, you, if you're familiar with the game and you watch this and you think my program may have made a mistake anywhere, I would greatly appreciate your adding a comment and, and letting me know about it. But I think for the most part, it probably played pretty close to flawlessly. I guess that's a credit to my debugging. Obviously, I ran into a few minor display bugs, which I fixed as I went. But uh, please like and subscribe if you like this out. Check my YouTube channel. Lots of other programs I've written. Like I said, I two of the programs I've written are available for download if you're interested in. One was for Too Many Bones and the other one was for Obsession, both of which are terrific games. I'll put information about those in the show notes. But otherwise, thanks for watching, everybody. Who knows, maybe I'll do a, a two-player or a three-player game and see how that goes. But that's enough for now. Thanks. Bye.